Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador claiming a lead of 20 to 30 points, Mexico's election seems to have a clear outcome with little room for controversy. But there's still clouds on the horizon. A part of the political and economic elite is determined to keep Lopez Obrador from taking the reins of the country. This group and their supporters are floating strategies in social networks and, in some cases, getting vicious. This week, Mexican and international media reported on several incidents of alleged fraud and manipulation of the vote. The front page of the conservative paper Reforma featured a video of the Institutional Revolutionary Party, PRI, handing out paper bags of cash to hundreds of party members, apparently in return for presenting copies of their voter cards. The PRI said they were reimbursing members for travel expenses. The ruling party has a long history of operators who, through combinations of threats and handouts, mobilize large numbers of poor people to vote for their candidates. This hardcore pre-vote has been able to swing elections in the past, but this time is facing a huge gap between its candidate and the leading candidate that the old-style tactics alone can't fill. In the past days, citizen groups also filed thousands of complaints in the Special Prosecutor's Office on Electoral Crimes, documenting the anti-AMLO calls we played on last week's show. The Prosecutor's Office says it's opening a broad investigation. An international cyber investigation discovered the widespread use of what's called Peña bots, bots named for President Enrique Peña Nieto, who used the tactic in his campaign, especially now in the state of Puebla. Organized citizens have also been protesting the National Electoral Institute for a lack of response to evidence of vote buying. The third and final debate was held June 12th without making a big difference in voter preference, according to the polls. Lopez Obrador looked a little sprier. Ricardo Anaya of the Conservative Coalition came off like a pugnacious bulldog. And Jose Antonio Meade was a little more relaxed, but no more appealing. Post-debate polls indicated that the majority gave the debate to López Obrador. The theme continued to be attacks on the frontrunner, but there were also some pointed attacks between the other two candidates. Let's take a look at a clip. Justo antes de que él llegara, en la Ciudad de México, se generaban más o menos 7,000 empleos. Sí. Rosario Robles. Cuando él fue jefe de gobierno de la ciudad, se generaban solamente 226. Si fue así como él lo plantea, pues los capitalinos no nos estarían apoyando. Y en cuanto a que van a bajar el precio de la gasolina, si ellos lo subieron, estos dos. Cambio es tu nuevo pacto con Enrique Peña Nieto. En tu obsesión por llegar al poder ya te comprometiste a perdonarlo. Este es el verdadero pacto, Anaya este, Peña. Aquí hay fotos tuyas con Peña, mira. Mira, sí, en el debate. Este es López Obrador con Peña, mira. En mire. el debate. Este es López Yo no Obrador lo he visto. con Peña. No lo he visto a Peña tiempo de réplica en seis López años. Obrador. Aquí estás con Peña. ¿Puedo terminar? Candidato Anaya, es tiempo de réplica del candidato sí. López Obrador. Es que él también se no toma visto, fotos con Peña. Y no él lo he visto con Peña. en seis años. ¿Pactaste no lo he con visto. él sí o no? No. Claro, candidato no, Anaya, es tiempo él. de réplica sí. del candidato López no, Obrador, por favor. No, he pactado con él, no lo he visto en seis años. Y tú te has reunido y le ofreciste, con él. Y le ofreciste en, impunidad. En un año te reuniste. Y le ofreciste impunidad. ¿Me dejan? Tiempo. En un, en un año se reunió seis veces, Gracias. ahora se peleó, quiere meterlo a la cárcel. It's hard to discern the strategies of the underdogs from the debate. At this late point in the campaign, their options are limited. López Obrador stuck with his theme of getting rid of corruption and corruption as the root of most evils, to the degree that he sometimes sidelined the specific questions. Anaya made it impossible for the free, PRI to throw its voters to him by attacking the ruling party and its candidate. But, according to inside sources, Peña Nieto had already vetoed that possibility. Coordinating any strategy between these coalitions is a long shot. A member of Anaya's own party, the National Action Party, recently filed a case against him for money laundering, and the coalitions are patched together from very diverse political forces. Meade's only path to consolidating votes against López Obrador's Morena party would be to knock Anaya out with a major scandal. That could be in the cards, but it's a drastic move, and at this point in the game would be a real Hail Mary pass, since only around 10 percent of the population support Meade. Some anonymous videos are promoting the useful vote to defeat López Obrador, arguing for a vote for Meade. What's especially interesting in this next video is that it talks about the capacity of the PRI to use governors and mayors to mobilize the vote against López Obrador. Here's a clip from that video. 
Cállate, chachalaca. Lo digo alto y claro. Antes que nada está México. Y responderemos con firmeza y valentía siempre. Quiero que se sepa que la mafia del poder se entere que no van a poder en la elección del año próximo y poder. There's still the fear that the hardcore establishment will refuse to accept, under any circumstances, a center-left candidate as president, even one with moderate proposals to decrease inequality and its mirror image, extreme privilege, fight corruption, and demilitarize the drug war. For many people, the rejection of López Obrador is personal and visceral, but it's also deeply political and seeks to protect powerful interests. Social media posts on the elections, including this program's, instantly become platforms for heated debates between supporters of one candidate or another. The nation is so polarized, the question isn't, who are you going to vote for, but whether Mexico will be saved or condemned on July 1st. The high level of passions in this election has at least had the positive result of getting people involved in voting, expressing opinions, and defending democracy. Hundreds of national and international observers will be at the polls on July 1st. There are citizen initiatives to monitor use of social programs, analyze algorithms in the computerized vote count system, and carry out a parallel vote count to prevent tampering. Nothing can make the system foolproof, but Mexicans are organizing to defend their vote. This has been this week's edition of Mexican Election Update. I'm Laura Carlson with Rompeviento TV.